Okay, Blair, so for this my first video to you, I thought it would be fitting to cover just that topic, beginnings. Or, more specifically, the myths and theories concerning the origins of everything. Let's start with the creation myths. There are five main categories of creation myths. In the future, it might be interesting to go over each one individually and learn about them in detail, but for today, let's just go over the basics. First, ex nihil... ex nihilio... ex nihilio... ex nihilo... yeah, ex nihilo. This is your standard, everyday Latin term for out of nothing. In these myths, a deity or creator does something, speaks, dreams, farts, and BAM! Everything. The majority of Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism all pretty much fall underneath this category, so it's a pretty common one. Number two, creation from chaos. This one is pretty self-explanatory. There's chaos, and then something happens. A deity, unity, or just random happenstance, and everything comes together. What might be interesting to note here is that Mormonism seems to fall more under this category than ex nihilo. The Book of Abraham, 324 and 4.1. These myths, though not the Mormon one, often come with the expectation that the universe will eventually dissolve back into the chaotic abyss once it came. 3. World Parent You'll recognize this from Greek mythology. Two entities, usually a male sky and a female earth, come together, and from their union, all of creation is born. Pretty sweet, huh? Emergence! Wait. Number four is emergence. The whole world is contained inside of a womb or an egg. The container bursts, and we all come falling out. How could we test this hypothesis? Well, first, you'll have to prove to me that we're not still inside the egg. Clever. That wasn't my idea. Finally, we have Earth Diver. In these myths, some creature is sent into primordial waters by the powers that be to find land on which to build the Earth. For example, Vainamainen in the Finnish national epic the Kalevala. I gotta give the Finns their props. Okay, now that we've got the myths out of the way, let's on to the science. My first thought when researching for this video was to find alternatives to the theory of the Big Bang Theory. But when I looked it up, I realized there are none. Where are they? They're, they're just not there. Well, okay, there are some. But since, like, the 60s, no one's really cared about them. There's no evidence, and they've been pretty much disproven. All of the observational evidence that theoretical physicists have been able to find, and the observational physicists, all the people who do the tests, point towards what's called the Big Bang. All this being said, the Big Bang isn't that concrete of an idea. There are a lot of models that people have been proposing to answer some of the questions that come up with it. What was going on before the bang? What actually did the banging? probably could have said that differently. What is going to happen to our universe as things continue to expand? What we do know is this. The whole universe used to be very hot and very dense. So hot and dense that no matter or energy or anything could exist except for the heat and the density. Then, for some reason, everything started to expand. And things have continued to expand. And the original expansion has decelerated but dark energy is making it accelerate, so we're expanding even faster now. All of the different theoretical models that people have come up with to explain what the Big Bang actually means are pretty complicated, more than I want to get into right now. But if you're interested in more information on this, or anything else I talked about, check out the links in the About section below. Can you see? It's down like there down there. Anyway, I thought you ought to know. And God looked upon what he had made and said, He's good.